It's very cool. All right, here we go. Uh, do you know Isha is coming or not? Um, I don't know. I can message her really quick. Okay, you know, she knows and she'll come. You know. Okay. I, I just, you know, she comes, she, it's great. I love when she comes, but I don't want to pressure as well. So. Yeah, yeah, no. You know, so always free, always free, always free. So uh, very magical. All right, so that's first thing to do. And uh, before we get going, uh, you know, there's just a couple of little housekeeping things that I have to do every time, um, like like pin the pin the live to the top, and and share oh, yeah. to my to my profile. You know, uh, things like that. Uh, they they make a difference just in terms of of more connectivity. So, and that uh, yes, like they do. Second or two for it to to uh, to show. So, yes, yeah. definitely. Um, and I'm going to, I put myself on uh, basically on mute, but I'm using my space bar to temporarily unmute myself Adult. just because the, yeah. yeah, the kitten is on a rampage right now. So if I don't want to be on live, you know, be unmuted oh, oh, and well, me trying yeah, to deal no, with her. So no worries. We don't, we don't hear it. Uh, Zoom is quite cool that way in that it automatically filters out background stuff. So when you speak, uh, all I do is just hear you. So no worries, no worries. All right, so there we awesome. are. And we, we sit there and let me share it to. Okay, all right, so we're live, we're cooking and we're good looking and everything. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it is a whole 18 degrees here right now oh wonderful what is it here by me i have no idea it's cold here too but i don't know if it's 18 degrees but it feels no, like two not. degrees <laughs> <laughs> it's about 40 over here so yeah. yeah it's only supposed to get up to 28 and then oh. this weekend's get it's supposed to get up in the 50s again it's like i wish the weather would make its choice but at the same time like spring and fall they are i mean undoubtedly and you know they are my favorite yeah um without a doubt my favorite two favorite times of the, the four seasons but um they also are very up and down with oh, the oh, temperature oh. and yeah. all that stuff so. uh, and see i went right to feeling and believing that's what we were doing this morning but no we weren't it's right next to it. See, feeling and believing over there, and then you got freedom from anxiety and worry right next door to it. FFA. So, wow, well, we still got a, we got a whole bunch of stuff to do still. So, anyway, we have got lots of fun to come. Lots of fun to come. Oh, oh, I wasn't screen sharing, so never mind. You don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Never mind. Oh no, that's okay. <laughs> you gotta really remind. Understandable me. I forget, though. I forget. You know. So, <laughs> all good. All good. Hello to anybody who's who's joining us. Uh, make this non full screen so I can see if there are comments. Norma, brilliant Norma, who is talking to me? That is an excellent, excellent, excellent question. That is the task and exercise that we left off on was what was asked in a different way, Norma, but that was it. So person, mysterious person who's talking to me, um, Chris Hayes, oh, sorry, oh, oh, actually somebody else, <laughs> I teased Jessica a little bit, <laughs> she looks like Chris Hayes a bit to me, and we got the same, yes, uh, nice smile, and happy. anyway, so, so who is speaking to us, Jessica, who is it, who is, well, who? my name is Jessica, and I am a participant in multiple programs, um, and I'm, I'm finding the new me and, uh, recognizing my moreness right now too, at the same time. So, um, there's so much that I'm learning about myself as well as about the world around me and what, you know, my feelings and my beliefs and also, um, my own anxiety of how it, um, how I've allowed it to, or chose to allow it to affect my life. So, um, and how to stop it, you know, thinking things all the way through to the end. And, um, 
you know, making sure that every decision I make is deliberate and, you know, things like that. It's just, it's every make, making sure that every decision I make is deliberate. Yeah. Yes. 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 Because I noticed that like when I'm not doing something in a deliberate way, I'm pardon my French, but I'm half-assing it. And so, um, <clears throat> it it tends to distort a lot of things because I'm not putting my all into it. And so I end up getting into trouble, like getting myself into trouble, um, not legally, but like in, in, t- in sense of like, I tend to put myself in situations um, or I used to, the old me used to um, put myself in situations that were not good. And I'm learning how to not do that. So, um, it's all a definite big process, but it's never ending. And I love that fact. Yeah. 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 Conditioned behavior and response. That's where we're at. So I was trying to remember where we were at, but I couldn't remember. (laughs) Lots of things that we're doing. It's one of these. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, we go. Okay. I went right past it. Okay. We were on simple plane of habit. We are on conditioned behavior and response. Um, um, please, Norma, please ask more questions. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm still here. So I'm still here, Norma. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. So I love when Norma asks questions. Norma asks good questions. So very cool. Anything more you want to know about Jessica before we get going? Jessica, open book. Right, Jessica? Yes. You don't have anything. I am. No more to hide in your life, right? Whatever anybody wants to know, you're happy to tell them. Right? Exactly. It's a, it's a great relief to have that ability to be able to share anything, right? Oh, most definitely. It is a huge relief to be able to share anything and not feel that shame or that regret in it, the understanding. Correct. Correct. And it, it's, a, it's a most excellent jump off point for where we're starting here, right? With conditioned behavior and response. That reluctance to share about ourselves, it's just a conditioned behavior and response for the most part. There's, there's almost never, ever any negative consequence that actually happens other than in the ideas that we have that, oh, if I share this, you'll hear my secrets, you're going to hear, I'm actually, what, what are you going to actually hear? You're going to hear you're a person like everybody else, that has doubts and fears and things to learn and grow and all this. Yeah, so what? Yeah, when, you, when you share it, it's like, okay, you know what, I'm a dumbass. All right, well, so, so what? I made mistakes. And yeah. that's yep. And that's also the, the the concept of acknowledging. You know, yep. I I did. I made a mistake. Okay. You know, I learned from it. That's why it's a mistake. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so uh, uh, Jessica, I, I would say, uh, you know, without you know, uh, distorting anything, that you you've lived a life that has had more than its fair share of mistakes. Yes. Yes. Most right. definitely. All right. So you know things weren't always normal and usual. They were a bit of a screw up sometimes, right? Uh, uh, profoundly so sometimes. Yes. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> right. 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 Okay. Now, <laughs> so not that we are looking to wear it as a badge of honor and to say, "Oh, look at me! How terrible my life was." That's not what we're doing here, right? Not at all. However. Right. So in all these screw ups and some of them were really terrible screw ups and they were no good and you're not happy about them, et cetera, et cetera. Right. However, I want to ask you a very profound question. Did you ever intend for them to be screw ups? Did you ever intend to do bad things? No, I did not. I am. I was completely unaware and definitely did not have the intention to make those screw ups or make bad decisions. Intention or the intent? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I did not have the intent yeah, no, no, to no, do sorry, that. No, sorry, no, sorry. You, it's true. You didn't have the intention, but you neither did you have the intent either. Neither. What? Both, both. I didn't have either one. Yeah. Yeah, and that's huge, right? Now, uh, you know, sometimes people say, "Yeah, you know what?" But you know, so in my case, well, I did want to do, you know my husband or my wife or my partner, whoever, I did want to do them harm or I did want to do my boss harm. 
I did have that intent. Yes, that does happen. That does happen. But we have to understand the difference between deliberate intent. And you say, well, I was very deliberate at the time. And then also to understand the difference between deliberate and intent and the deliberate intent that happens inside a bubble. So now I say, all right, in your case, Jessica, you answered, you said, no, I didn't have this intent. But what about that person who did have the intent? And they were very deliberate. I mean, yeah, I really wanted to mess my boss up. He was a terrible person. Or my ex, you know, they were horrible. And, and, and you know, they were just terrible. Anyway, uh, now I say, yeah, you were deliberate. But were you also in a bubble? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was in a big foggy cloudy I, the fog was dense right right well right. but stick with me with, with with the example of of someone else now right who, who says who, who who didn't answer the way you answered and said no i didn't have the intent to be deliberately bad right where they say no i did have the intent to be deliberately bad because then i ask those people i say oh were you in a bubble and they say yeah yeah so you were deliberately trying to be bad inside the bubble Yes. And there's a difference there, you know, when you're right. deliberately doing, you know, when you deliberately have the intent to harm somebody inside right. your bubble, right. you're right. still so, so very much so unaware, though, as to what exactly. other options are. That's where I was going with this, right? So, so where I'm going is to this other person now who says, yes, I was deliberately bad. And I say, yeah, you were deliberately bad, but inside the bubble. Yes, inside the bubble. So now I ask them, say, if you think of it now, and you think of that decision that you made deliberately inside the bubble. Is it something that you want to do with the sensibility, the you that's outside the bubble? No. Which is the real you? The you that was in the bubble or this you that, ah, oh, okay. So, so your real you didn't want that. It was a bullshit you, a nonsense you, a bubble you. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. So let me ask you again. Did you deliberately want to do bad things? Well, no. Right. So it's a very big understanding. It's not a way to go and excuse yourself, of course. No. Right. You're always responsible. Even if you're a knucklehead, you're still responsible because you still do stuff. But it is a way to understand our behavior and to make peace with our past selves. Now, we went through that poem, the me of then and now. And that's a huge, really powerful poem, right? And it's all about, about understanding that the past you, the me of then, is a very different you to the you of now, right? And the, the me of then cannot do the things that I did then. Cannot, it's not possible. Why? Because I've changed. That's the key. If you want to make peace with the stuff from the past, you've got to change. That's the only way, right? So it's not like we're saying, oh, I'm using this to excuse myself. No, I've changed. I've changed. I'm no longer that person, right? I cannot do those things anymore. So it's not a matter of excusing. It's a matter of understanding. And it is a matter of changing, right? You can't, you can't go back and do all those stupid, idiotic things that you did before, right? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Once you no. understand what's involved, we cannot deliberately be foolish, stupid, ignorant, bad, or so. We can do so in unawareness. We can do so when we get caught up in emotions and stuff. Yes, but not deliberately. No, can't do it. Can't do it. No. Not if you're a good person. All right. Conditioned behavior and response. Will you read, please? Even if we weren't predisposed to anxiety and worry, when we did, this was reinforced by society. Worry typically is approved of in a subtle way as a caring about others. It shows you are a good person, a subtle way belief system at play. There are subtle belief system at play. Yeah. Also, yeah. Yeah. if we don't worry, we show up those who do. So our authority figures entrench their behavior by focusing on conditioning us into the same. Yes, yes. Very simple, simple thing this, that we don't necessarily realize that we kind of expected, right? 
uh, to to be uh, to worry and be anxious, right? Because it's reinforced by society. Oh well, you know, uh, that's so worrying. So when somebody says that, oh, that's so worrying. When you drop that statement onto a, a new psychology, right? The implication is that this thing is worrying, right? There's a hard and fast relationship when you say, oh, that's so worrying, right? It, it's like direct, well, you know, they're not saying it could be, it might be, it's worrying to me. No, they're stating it as a fact, like, well, that hot plate is hot. Well, yeah, it's all red, it's hot. Okay, that's a fact. They're saying it's so worrying in the same way and the same vibe, the same tone, same implication. And because I start off as a good person in my life. So when I hear this person saying this, right, when I'm a new psychology coming into the world, because I take it for granted that they are an honest, genuine, good person. I don't for one second doubt that they are not speaking the truth. I just accept it. It's worrying. Well, they say it's worrying. It's worrying. Right? Why, why must I doubt them? This is the person who is in charge of me, who's taking care of me, who's responsible for me. So, well, uh, I, I, it's like by default, I, I don't even think about trusting that they're going to be sensible. Right? I take it for granted because, well, we don't like this word should, but really, you know, in my brain, they should. Yes, they should be. But that's the problem with should, right? It'll screw you up in a hurry because, yeah, they should be sensible, but they aren't, right? So they say all sorts of nonsense, things like that. And because I don't yet have the ability to discern and the awareness to understand that they are quite capable of saying the most outrageous, preposterous, ridiculous things as if they were true. So this screws me up, in other words, right? So conditioned behavior and response. This is really, really profound. And we're tying it here to anxiety and worry. Of course, it applies to a bunch of other things, right? All of this, oh, you must be so upset. Really? Why? You know, something happened that's a natural thing in the world. And, you know, it happens every day. It's part of life. But now I must be upset. Says who? You? Well, sorry, I don't agree. Right? I don't think I must be upset. I can choose to be, but I don't have to be. Right? There's no must be. So when we actually start to really listen to what is being said, and we really pay attention, we realize how we get conditioned, our behavior gets conditioned, and our responses get conditioned, and we don't even realize it. Right? This is what conditioning usually is. All right, it can be deliberate, like when you condition your dog to, to salivate when you ring the bell, right? A la Pavlov, right? Or, or any, any animal training really is conditioning. But, and we can train ourselves, you know, like you say, you condition yourself like an athlete and all this, right? Uh, this, is, this is deliberate conditioning, but we have this undeliberate and inadvertent conditioning. Inadvertent, right? which means it just happens. Nobody's even trying to do it. It just happens. It just comes about, right? So when we become aware of this, we're like, holy moly, wake up, Joe. It's like, ah, wow, wow, wow. Okay, I'm now going to start paying attention. I don't want to be inadvertently conditioned. No, no, thank you very much, right, Jessica? Very much so. And, you know, <clears throat> Even with, um, even when it comes to society and anxiety and worry, it, you, you see it so much in so many different places. In you know, you know, you should be worried. Hello, Anna. Um, yes, you should be worried about the government doing X, Y, and Z. You should be worried about finances. You should be worried about you know. And I wrote a whole post on this, I believe. I but it's it's one of those things that like you. It, it you're it that's being entrenched on you that is being you know and it's up to you to choose whether or not if that's something you truly want to worry about like me I don't worry I don't want to worry about you know uh political things to me it, it does not serve me anything um I don't want to worry about how somebody else views me because to me it does not affect my my way of living it does not affect me that is a them thing. Yeah, yeah, 
And I'm choosing to not worry about it. I'm choosing to not worry whether or not somebody thinks I'm weird or worry. I used to, I'm the old, the old of me, like used to worry constantly about image, about what, because that's what I grew up with. I grew up with, you don't show anybody what's going on on the inside, you know? Yeah. 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 And this is all the same thing, right? Those were conditioned beliefs. You don't show others what's going on inside. Yes. Well, where did that rubbish come from? That came from BMNs. And for those who don't know what a BMN is, a BMN is a bullshit manipulator narcissist, right? It comes from my book on the psychology of the superiority paradigm. And I have a program involved as well uh, on that, right? All right, so uh, this, this, where they say you don't show others what's going on. Why? Why not? Well, because you're full of nonsense and you do things as a BMN that you know you not that you shouldn't do, right? that you feel guilty about, that you feel bad about, but you do them because you're getting a short-term gain. Right? And you know it's wrong and you do it. So of course you don't want anybody to see what's going on inside you because what's going on inside you is terrible, right? And you, you have no justification for your behavior. You're looking to shortcut and cheat and, and, and abuse and manipulate and so on. Now, so of course you want to hide this, right? Now, I want to tie on something here before before uh, I, I carry on here. Yes, Anna, uh, conditioned from culture, religion. Yes. Now, I, I, I'm very cautious, right, when talking about religion, and, and and I can really go into great detail. But you know, religion is 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 very delicate and very sensitive. And yes, of course, religions are part of this profound conditioning. So and and they can cause lots of trouble as a result. Because when I grew up, and I grew up in a very, very conservative religious culture, right? Uh, it doesn't matter what religion, because it applies to religions across the world, right? And in this religion, the 11th commandment was, thou shalt not question. That's it, right? That was what I was conditioned and trained to be. I was conditioned and trained to be obedient. Did they succeed? Well, no, but never mind. That's a different story. Was I disobedient? No. Didn't have to be. You can find other ways of doing things, right? You can just have awareness, be slitty, in a way. A different point. But the, the key I'm making is that uh, for the most part, the, the religions believe in their misbelief of what they think is good. They think you being obedient is the ideal, but it's sadly not. Why? Because if you actually are really super obedient, right? If you are 100% obedient, what's the difference between you and a robot? There's no exactly. difference. Exactly. You know. So, sorry, Jessica, I want to I wanna make my point here. I'm going, going somewhere. Right? So, if you are just obedient and you are really excellently so, if you don't do bad things because of fear of punishment and you've been told not to do them, Right? That's the only reason you're doing it. You're doing it because somebody said, don't do it. It's bad. And you say, yes, okay. And you do it, right? And well, you're going to get punished if you do. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not doing it. So two things, right? If I do it just out of obedience, I could do it completely mindlessly. And whether I do something good or bad, either way, there's no morality involved because there's no choice, right? Very First much point. so. That first point, very big, big point. So if you get so conditioned that you just do automatically, well, you're just a robot. You have no, no free choice. And what you do means absolutely bugger all. It's not real, right? And then if you do it, okay, well, now I've got a choice. All right, okay, well, you got to choose. Well, if you do it, you're going to get punished. And if you do it, you're going to get a reward. If I do it purely for the reward or the punishment, likewise, where's the morality involved? None. Zero. I'm doing it because I'm going to get something out of it, not because I personally believe it's right or wrong. And you see this all the time when you have people that join a society and they go along with stuff and they just want the rewards, but they don't really care. And you can clearly see that they don't give two hoots about it. You know, privately, they'll go and do the opposite, but they do it for the reward. What does that mean? Nothing. Right. So this is a very big deal. Hello, Bina. Hello, Bina. Hello, Bina. Yes, Hello, Bina. Anna, 
I'm just going, uh, you know, I'm not saying this because I feel that you need to hear it or, or you know, uh, you just bring it up. So I kind of just go on a tangent on it because, well, it, 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 it makes for interesting discussions, right? It does. So, um, it's very powerful what you're saying. You're just, like, just like um, I was conditioned to um, that, you know, a man should be with woman, woman should be with man. Wow. Um, that, and I always worried that if I came out, um, I was going to get ridiculed for it. I was going to be hated for it. Um, and so I essentially chose to torture myself and, and not have, you know, have my own form of beliefs, um, about that or my, you know, it was always like, oh, it's just a, even if I tried in the past, like when I tried in the past, like to come out, it was always considered as a phase. Um, but, you know, and that's something like that, that is, that is still a conditioned thing. You know, you worry about, you know, how, what other people are going to think in that moment, you know, you're like, oh, well, I'm lesbian. So what are other people going to think? Are they going to be, you know, all weirded out? Are they going to hate me? Are they going to accept me? You know, especially within my own family. That was a big, yeah, big very, deal very for deep, me. Very deep conditioned belief and behavior and response. Yes. Very powerful. Yes. Very, very powerful. All right. So I want to touch on something else here as well. Uh, so hello, Bina. I'm glad you have Bina. Most excellent. Wonderful. 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 Hey, yeah, Bina. Cool. 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 All right. Always good when Bina joins. Always good. Uh, so yeah, so Anna, I just wanted to share, you know, that whatever you say, you, you stimulate, you know, I assumed from what you said there that you, you, you understood what I was talking about, you know, before I shared it, but I, I like to just elaborate a little bit, it's, it adds, it adds depth to, to what we're doing, and, and that's part of the fun, right, so, uh, but you bring up religion, which is very powerful here, and, and this is a key point here, I was trying to highlight it and emphasize it here, but for whatever reason, it wasn't letting me let me go. Yeah, let me go that far. Uh, a subtle belief system at play. So this, when we look at this conditioned behavior, when it comes to anxiety and worry in particular, we we just using anxiety and worry as a focus point, but this applies to many other things, right? Um, this, when when we when we get this inadvertent conditioning, right? Uh, you know, like when somebody says, "Oh, that's so worrying," or like, "Aren't you worried?" And they ask it in that expectation, right? Aren't you worried? Uh, well, no. And then if you say no, you see, I, like you, 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 the default is like, um, you, you know automatically in that question that if you just said no, then they're like, well, what's wrong with you? You should be worried. And, and now you, you start up the whole thing, right? Well, not that I'm cared about what you say. Me, if they ask me, am I worried? I say no. And they're like, but, but I say, no, I'm not worried. Why on earth would I want to be worried? And that's like that question really kind of blows their minds because I didn't say why on earth should I be worried? No, I said why on earth would I want to be worried? Oh, very different question, right? <laughs> it changes the whole ball game. So uh, and now you start to get into the point that I'm trying to make here that there's a belief system that's in play and the beliefs really affect us. Those beliefs that we don't even realize are there and this is the program we were doing earlier, and that goes alongside this. It's a very powerful program. It's called Feeling and Believing. And it, it, it goes into depth in the relationship between feelings and beliefs. And here we have a really good example that people believe they should be worried. Since they believe they should be worried, they feel worried, right? Now, that feeling of worried, well, uh, how do you feel? Well, I feel worried. Oh, well, now that feeling reinforces your belief that you should be worried and the two starts feeding off each other. I call them a lunacy loop. That's an infinity loop, right? So the more you feel, the more you strengthen your belief. The stronger your belief is, the more it causes you to feel more strongly. And so it goes and goes and goes, right? And this is when worry becomes anxiety, when it runs away with itself like this. It's very, very, very powerful. And it's when you so easy it to allow it to run. Exactly. Into, you know what I mean? To exactly. run into anxiety because, you know, exactly. if you're so, if, okay, take, take something that everybody has to deal with. Every adult, bills. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. 
paying mortgage or rent on time, paying the car note on time, paying the insurance on time, any type of bill you may have. Um, we are, we're, uh, as even as children, we watch our parents um, get worried about how they're going to pay something, how they're going to um, afford something, or even food for that matter. It's it's such a big, you know, uh, thing. It's um, to us, we are conditioned to worry about how you're going to pay for your bills. How, are, you know, what's the best job you can get that's going to give you enough money to be able to pay for your stuff. Um, and in reality, really, you don't have to worry about it because it will work itself out, you know. Um, but you also have to take the steps to make it work out. You know, but if you worry, if you continuously worry and feel anxious about it just because other people ask you if that's, you know, um, ask you if you are or wonder why you're not, um, you don't see those extra steps. You don't see those extra options you have. Um, and that's where it really like, start, wow. Sorry, I got distracted by all the windows. Um, I'm trying to just say, I and replied to Bina while I listened to you, but it became very complicated. And I don't know why. why. <laughs> I can see that. It's I'm just... trying to say, I and replied to you, Bina, but it won't let me. You see, I don't know. It says replying to Bina. Okay, let me see if I type here. Oh, there we go. Okay, I don't know. It just seems very weird. Very weird. Anyway. Sorry, I didn't mean to make it all production, but I don't know, for whatever reason, Facebook was deciding to be difficult. So, yeah, I want to say hi to Bina. It's important. It's important to say hi to Bina. Yeah, Bina's a magical creature. Always. Bina is amazing. Yes, yes. All right. Brilliant. Hi, <laughs> Bina. We made a whole big fuss about you now. <laughs> I didn't mean to be Bina, just the way it came out. So, all right. So be it. So be it. So be it. All fun. All fun. All right, so this this where we at here to really understand that our worry and our anxiety is so deeply rooted or can be in a conditioned behavior and response and and how that is subtly connected to a belief system and the belief system is connected to the feelings, the feelings connected to the belief and they all loop around, right? Very, very, very powerful to understand and yeah. how many of our cultural systems Right, and not just uh, religion, but uh, our our education system, our our, our cultural uh, system of family and, and 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 extended family. All of these things, they all have beliefs in them that keep adding to this idea of worry. Right, like for instance, you should worry. Why? Because well, that means you care, and it shows you're a good person. Right now, of course, good people, truly good people, don't need to go around showing that they're good. Well, I'm just good. I don't have to show. I don't have to prove it to anybody. All of this stuff comes from the BMNs, who of course aren't good people, so they need to show and of course uh, to justify and legitimize their BS showing to prove something that's not true or try to to justify and legitimize, they make this something that everybody should do. Well, you've got to show you're a good person. No, I don't have to do this. You need to do it, but don't put your things on to me, right? <laughs> so that makes so much more sense right now, Sil. Sorry, when yeah. you said that with the VMNs and like how they can condition yes, yes. their quote unquote, what they would perceive as victims uh, or prey, how they would condition them into believing that it's imperative that you show that you are a good person um, because if you don't, then you're, you're going to be seen as a bad person. Exactly. And I can see how that, even in my own personal life, how that wow. has affected me because I was always so concerned about showing the old, the, you know, the old of me was so concerned about showing people that I was actually a good, or that I'm actually a good person. Um, that I didn't take into consideration that yeah. if I'm really a good person, that will take, um, that will show itself. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it because it will show on its own. Exactly. Um, um, also, before I carry on here, uh, Anna Maria, if you wish to join us on Zoom, just let me know. I'll PM you the link and you can hop on and, and join in the chat. You're more than welcome. Right. 
uh, Bina, Norma, everybody, they already know uh, that they can do that, you know, because to, to uh, interact via chat is a bit of a delay, is a 30 second delay, so it's a bit slower. You know, I do pay attention to the, to the comments, but you're more than welcome to come on and, and chat with us about this stuff. There's, there's lots to chat about. So uh, I, I want to go back over this point that I meant. I, I sort of was going over it really quickly because there's a lot that we want to do, but there's no time limit, right? So let's go back to this point that grabbed Jessica so powerfully. This point of the BMNs, right? And again, BMN stands for Bullshit Manipulated Narcissist All in One, right? In other words, people that do things for bad reasons, right? And not only do they do them for bad reasons, but typically because that narcissism is involved, they very hollow and insecure inside. So th that's why they are bullshitting all the time, why they are manipulating and all this, because they looking to uh, artificially do something and show that they're good and nice and feel nice and feel good because they don't want to actually put the work in to do it for real. Or they've come to realize that they are but hollow as they grow up and they become aware, oh, and now they can't face this awful truth of being hollow and they don't want to acknowledge, oh, you know what, I, I thought I was the king of the world. And, you know, when I was a kid, I was treated as uh, worshipped and said, you the, the, the prince of the world and, you know, you're fantastic and everything. And now I realize, actually, I'm just another kid. I'm just a you know, typical knucklehead. And they don't want to face this awful truth and their ego cannot handle it. So they have to lie and lie and lie and deceive themselves and thinking that if they deceive others, now they can prove they're not hollow. Well, of course, you cannot make an untruth into a truth, but this is what they try to do. All right. So uh, real quick there. I mean, I got a whole book on this if anybody's interested. But yes, the key point I want to make, it's a very subtle point, right? So when they say you should worry, right? And, and you got to show you're a good person. They are pushing a ideology, which is an ideology that they need to do. Now, they could just do it. They could just go around showing how they're a good person, right? And they don't need to educate you and your, you know, others around them. They don't need to push this as something that everyone needs to do. But why do they do this? Because if they did it on their own, it, it stands out in isolation. Furthermore, right, if they can get everybody to do this, it justifies their behavior. Because if everybody does it, well, then it becomes right in their mind, right? This is BMN thinking. If everybody does it, it's, it's okay, right? It's not illegal if everyone does it. Well, or it's not wrong if everyone does it, right? I mean, so this is the logic, right? So they want you to sign off and support through you also doing their nonsense you justify and legitimize their behavior. So there's a double layer here, right? They're doing things, something that's actually quite unnecessary for them to do, but they have to because they need that justification and legitimization. So it's very subtle. And if we now really go into this a little bit deeper, yes, we can see that, holy moly, you know, most of our society, most of our culture, right, through the ages, has been ruled by BMNs, right? What is a feudal society, right? A feudal society, you've got the Lord over there and everybody else are their slaves. Uh, wait, 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 you say, oh, no, no, they weren't slaves, they were serfs. Yeah, and the difference is? What's the difference? The difference between a slave and a serf is that a, a, a serf is a voluntary slave. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So basically, uh, right. so the end result is the same, right? So, so Jessica, hold your thought one second. So I just want to lock this up here, tie it together, right? So the 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 feudal lords, the BMNs, they uh, got to be very clever in their manipulation. They figured out, man, the ideal is for us to have slaves, but you know, slaves are a lot of work. They want to run away. They want to kill you. All this stuff, right? So we are going to manipulate the goodness of people. To make them voluntary slaves and this is what they did so they pushed all these cultural ideas uh, that you should do this you should do that and they used should to manipulate right and so conditioned response behavior like anna said yes they used religion they distorted and perverted the beauty that religion can be and is supposed to be and they used it for their own ends for control and manipulation right so i'm not against religion for those listening 
I am against the misuse and abuse of religion. Yes, which is a very different topic, right? Don't confuse the two. Don't confuse the two. Just because people misuse religion doesn't mean religion is bad and wrong. No, right? It's misuse of it that's wrong. All right. So uh, the, the key point that I'm making here is that uh, I want to really key in, because it's a long story if we go into the details. It's very fascinating stuff. But the key point I want to make is if we start paying attention to our cultural conditioned behaviors and responses and see where they come from, we see that we have an entire freaking culture of stuff that's being pushed onto us that's complete and utter bullshit, right? You should worry, you should care, you know, you should uh, work your butt off and this is the most fantastic thing ever. Well, of course it is if I'm the slave owner and you the voluntary slave, you know, all of these things that we take for granted as the goods in our society, you know, things that are good and wonderful, we need to look a little bit carefully, right? A lot of them are there and they completely and utterly manipulate us, right? Like you should worry points and stuff like this, right? No, there's no need for you to should worry at all, right? None whatsoever. It doesn't show that you care and all this. It just shows that you are believing poorly, right? And you've got better options, better choices, right? Very, very big deal. So, um, so there is a question I want to ask. I already know the answer, but I, I want to ask you just for the, the aspect of everybody else. So, you're telling me that I don't need to show that I care through worrying about somebody. Exactly. And if I do, then is that a misapplication of goodness? In a way, yes. Right. Why? Because first of all, uh, you, you, you believe that you are now, okay, I'll, I care about somebody and I'm worried about them. Right. Well, first of all, you, you, you might be stuck in this belief that that's the only thing that you can do. Well, no, there's other things you can do beside worrying, right? And secondly, the very act of worrying about somebody could really actually do the very opposite to what you wish it to do, right? So if, if, if I'm along, and again, right, I'm a, I'm a pure psychology, right? I've got no previous influence. I'm, I'm kind of got nothing to make me decide one way or the other. Right? And Jessica comes along. So please be all worried about me, Jessica. Oh my goodness. Are you okay? Is there anything I can do for you? Do we need to take you to the doctor? Do I need to give you your meds? Do you need something? Like, do you want me to make you soup? Do you want me to give you an extra blanket? Do you, I, I really wish I could take this away from you. You look like you're in so much agony. I was fine. Holy crap. But I'm supposed to be all of the stuff. Wow. Okay. Let me check again. Let me see. But in that moment, I've seen this happen plenty of times, right? The kid was totally fine. But this idea, this suggestion, this thing that they supposed to be, supposed to be in pain, supposed to be upset, supposed to be stressed, bothered, whatever, annoyed, bothered. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't, but now that you say this and I'm supposed to, okay, well, I'll be it. Right, I'm either way, I can go either way, but I'll do it because you're expecting it of me. And well, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I'm a good person and I want to make you happy. So this is what you, oh, okay, well, there you go. All right, now you're happy and I'm doing what you think I should do and supposed to be. I never had it in the first place. So you can cue the behavior you don't want through inappropriate worrying and anxiety and stress and and this the suggestivity of the language right because you are saying things as if this is the only way it works right like well you should be uh, no there's no, no no such thing at all you're not asking an open question you know uh, are you feeling good and the person's like well uh, are you feeling bad? See, if you ask both, instead of saying, are, 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 you, are you ill? Are you upset? Are you... No, ask them if they're feeling good first. If they really struggle to say they're feeling good, well, then you've got something there. Now they may just automatically say, yeah, I'm fine. Well, okay. Are you feeling bad? See, now you're getting a bit closer to the, to the thing. To understand that kids will tell you what you want to hear because they're good and they think this is what they're supposed to do. They haven't really learned yet about honesty, right? They just tell you what you think they, they, they think they should tell you, right? They're supposed yes. to. It's kind of built into the system a little bit to please those who are in power over you. Yeah. And then I mean, as this is a very we, animalistic thing. 
Yes, and as we get older, if we're still unaware, then, exactly. you know, throughout the years, teen exactly. years, adolescence, all that, exactly. we learn to play the system. We learn to manipulate and tell people what they want to hear just so we get what exactly. we want. Exactly, exactly. Then we can get, get, get more sophisticated. Ask the child, how are you feeling? Very neutrally. But now I'm asking because I really want to know. And I'm asking built into, and they maybe even know from previous things that I really expect them to say what's going on, not to say what I want to hear. Right? Uh, so now they learn over time that when you ask, you really want to know, and they will tell you what's going on. It doesn't take much, right? So to can, you can leverage this conditioned behavior to condition choice. I just said something very profound. Yes? We can condition choice. If you condition specific behavior, even if it's positive, it's still conditioned behavior. You're still removing choice. What you want from your child is to think, to think from themselves, to choose, 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 choose. This is what you want. Uh, when you're anxious and worried, what is the stress? The stress comes from the belief that your choices have been limited or removed. Yes? So... I have a quick question. So yeah. you yeah. you remember me giving you sending you screenshots of my conversation with C, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So when I think about it, in the beginning there was, you know, hellos, and then I put I assume you're struggling. Uh, Is that queuing? Still, even though I does. know that he yeah. was. Correct, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's still queuing. It's still saying that this is... No this is exactly, yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. Because, you know, very subtly it says, well, I assume you're struggling, which implies that you should be struggling. Okay, I get it now. And that's why it went the opposite way. But, but if, you, if you actually pull up the exact language... You said something. You, I think you used the words "don't." You said no, "don't." He, he used oh. the words "don't." He said, oh, oh. "But um, something you did before that it was you, you was you were telling him to do something rather than sharing a point of awareness or, or making a suggestion." I, I don't remember your exact wording, but that was what triggered that. It was the specificness of how you were telling rather than sharing or, or uh, making a suggestion. Yeah, you have to look at the exact wording. I, I forget the exact wording. It's very powerful. But yes, uh, to, okay. to answer the question though, yeah, it is. So it is a I, I do remember what I said. Um, and okay, C said, I do not have to answer. And I said, you are correct. You truly, I, you truly don't. Either back way. Up, back up, back up, back up. Go before that. Before, before that. Go before no, that. there was no other before that. There was, oh. it was, it was hello. Yeah, it was hello, hello. I assume you're struggling. I do not oh. have to answer. I said, you are correct. You truly don't. But either way, it doesn't stop me from asking. Just like, just as you don't have to answer, I don't have to ask. I don't have to ask, but because I care, I asked. And wow. he goes, I have nothing to say to you. I said, okay, that's your choice. He goes, don't, he said, don't smile. It's nothing, it is nothing to be proud of. And then I responded with, I can smile if I want. My reason for my smile is clearly none of your business if you want to be rude about it. Mm -hmm. And then it went from there. But he, I said, yeah, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Like that's purely your choice, but it doesn't right. stop me from caring. Right, right, right. But you know, in somebody who's in a contentious mindset, if you say you don't have to, right, you're telling them what to do and then just puts their back up. Now, of course, what you're saying is self-evidently true and that will, because it's self-evidently true and they want to argue and, and be contentious, but they really can't. Now they end up in a frustrated loop Right, that's self contradictory and now they just get irritated and annoyed because, well, the, you're telling them what to do, but you're not at the same time, and it's like kind of a screw up, right? <laughs> so, what is the would the better response be? Would the better response be if that's what you choose? You know, if that's what you're choosing, that's okay. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, well, again, that's telling them if if what you're choosing, the, no, just say, well, I'm okay with whatever you choose. Uh, and that's a statement of personal choice, right? Yes. See? Yeah. Rather than saying, you know, whatever you choose, that's fine. I'm still making a judgment on your behavior if I say whatever you choose, that's fine. Uh, well, what's it to you what I choose? Nothing to do with you, right? So well, if I say, well, I'm, I'm easy, whatever you choose, it doesn't make a difference to me. It's your, your, your choice. So I'll, I'll observe and, you know, pay attention. Yes, but it's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't actually really truly affect me. It's, it's your choice. And I'm okay with whatever you choose. I, I might not choose it myself, but, you know, what you choose is your choice, not mine. Right? So yeah, so, like okay, that. so that makes more sense to change the wording because that's where I was trying to go with it. Yeah. But my wording was not in the, the right context. That makes so, more sense. And I can definitely yeah. tell that, yeah, I made the situation worse. Absolutely. Absolutely. By what I said. Yes. Well, and then unintentionally. Also, yeah. Yeah. Then also you kind of fell into that. Well, uh, this is what I'm doing. And, you know, kind of a little bit of a tit for tat kind of a you know, style of, of, of discussion, which if somebody's yeah. contentious, if they're not contentious, that's not going to inflame them. But if they're in a contentious mindset, that's certainly going to inflame them, right? Because it's like, well, we're having a little word competition. And when somebody's contentious, there's no such thing as friendly competition, right? It always gets nasty. Yes? Always gets nasty. Yes, very much so. And that goes in part of, um, of you know, the different things that I've learned that, uh, you know, in the aspect of working on my relationship with, you know, C. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, so, so here's something I, I want to emphasize. A very cool point. Um, I'm, I'm keen to hear from anybody in chat there. I don't know. Anna, I hope you're still with us. You know, sometimes people can't stay long, um, but Anna, Norma, Bina, I'm keen to hear your perspectives on this. But but let's get into this in a different way, right? You were asking about better words, and I'm very 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 reluctant to give specific words, right? Um, uh, just that I thought I remembered, but maybe it wasn't. Anyway. Uh, the, the, the point is rather to change the underlying understanding and the words will take care of themselves, right? So if you look at your default intent there and a conditioned behavior, your conditioned behavior is to be caring, right? Is to give advice, is to give suggestions, is to be helpful, yes. correct? Those are all your defaults and they come from conditioning, right? And in this particular case, this is exactly where the problem is, right? And that the person is in a contentious mindset and they're not open to suggestions, they're not open to help, advice, none of this, right? And to a certain extent that when, when people are pushing advice on you, it's actually healthy to resist it, right? Because, well, in your case, you know, your advice might be sensible, but how often didn't you have advice pushed on you that was absolute utter nonsense. Yes? Oh, so many times. Not just nonsense, but detrimental. Right. So Very. being a bit, being a bit uh, uh, um, anti-advice is actually more healthy than not. Now, of course, if you're in a belief bubble, then it's dangerous, right? Uh, so, but the key point I'm trying to make is that even though our advice is well-meaning and we know for a fact our advice is good, we still don't want to encourage somebody's psychology to be a, a, and become an advice-taking psychology, right? It may get them out of their problem, but you're trading one problem for another, right? So with, with, with Sia, I, I do now recognize how I had... Um, I put more emphasis on the advice part and exactly. also exactly. how I slipped exactly. back into that exactly. Um, exactly. Uh, parental uh, yeah. you should type exactly. of thing. Exactly. And yeah. I see now because that's, we would banter. We, you know, that's how our, a lot of our conversations used to go was yeah. we would banter back and forth. And I was like, I had this mindset of, 
I'm, I've been through more than you child. And I've done this. I've been there, done that, did this. And I can do it way better than you can. So, you know, so try me. So basically that's, that's basically how my conversation would, you know, conversations would go with him. Um, Now I see that how easily still it's, I need more work in that area. Oh, oh, so you're responsible (laughs) for all of this. No, I'm not fully responsible. Oh, but no. I'm hold taking on, my. Hold on, hold, on, hold on a second. Didn't you just two seconds back say, uh, to uh, you were you were saying to him, look, I've done all of this and I've done it way better than you. Weren't you just challenging him to be more disruptive, more troublesome than you were? Yes, I. <laughs> so, I hate it when you do that. So. <laughs> No, but I, I love it at the same I'm, time. I'm, I'm being a bit cheeky, but you know, this is what I'm trying to say. When we really start listening, we don't only listen to the other person. When we apply capital H hearing, we hear ourselves. We hear consequences and we hear implications. There is a profound implication. You said to CJ, don't be me, be better than me. Right? Yes. But but he's being better than you at causing trouble. Or he was. Oh, <laughs> he outdid me on that one. Well, because you, in a way, put that idea into his head and kind of challenged him to do this, right? Look, I know this stuff better than you. You know, I've so you made it into a, a competition, right? And you you brought that that competitive, the superiority mindset brain. It, it's man. Well, you can't be better than me at causing trouble. Oh no! So all right, here we go. Right. So it's very profound. okay. Yes, it is. And when I say I I hate it when you do this, really, I didn't mean that part. It's just me saying I don't 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 like it when you're right. (laughs) Good. Oh, wonderful. And I hope you can stay longer. Um, You know, this will be on replay. If you can't stay longer, I'm assuming that you have to go. Um, Anna, um, um, we, 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 you know, we're going to be going on for for another hour or so, uh, and it will be on replay. You'll you'll find it in group and also in the guides tab. There's a special guide uh, that where you can see all of these and all of the recordings, right? So you can watch it at your leisure. So yeah, and please, when you do watch or if you do watch as a recording, um, um, comment as you watch, uh, because the, um, um, Facebook puts a timestamp next to your comment. And then it's like you're doing it live. And I always respond to those, right? So uh, please, please do. I, I'm keen to hear more. So I'm, I'm really glad you joined, Anna. And I hope you'll join us in the future. And again, if you want to come and chat on, 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 on Zoom, more than welcome, right? We, 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 the more the merrier. We love it. It's a great joy. So too fantastic. So uh, this point I'm making here, right? So my deeper point, the overview point, is change your understanding, your deeper understanding and your intent when it comes to see, right? Your intent is to be caring. Yes, but find a better way to care, correct? Yes. Yes. Your intent is to give advice. Find a better way to give advice, right? Because your advice may not be the be all and end all that you think it is. So the thing is with advice, it's always troublesome because it's particular and it's specific so instead of advice share choice share i was two or choosing go ahead i was inadvertently and unaware like i was very inadvertent as well as i was unaware um and there was a huge there is a huge lack of understanding and that is something that i have um come to acknowledge um and become aware of the so that that just like changes the game completely for me now because it's not just even understanding him but understanding myself in this sense of you know deeper meaning of you know how i viewed things and makes so much more sense and that's also a part of the reason also too as to why I have a hard time understanding him because I'm creating this yeah, yeah, and yeah, without yeah. even realizing it. Yeah, yeah. So one massive, wonderful, very exciting, positive takeaway. He does listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I well, and that's the thing is the very positive takeaway about this too is that now I I have a a foundation yeah, yeah. as to yeah. where how you know where to go from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When in doubt, don't spit it out, or don't puke it out, don't chuck it out, don't right. So in other words, shut up. I taught my son. So yeah, and that's the thing is too is I by my own behaviors and actions and belief systems i had taught my son how to outdo anybody and everybody exactly. no matter what exactly and that's exactly what was going <laughs> on right this was it so he was doing what you taught him really really well too well yeah but again my point is look at the positive i right? don't see the oh, negative yeah. So this to say, wow, wow, this is really awesome that, you know, actually I, I was having an effect. I, I, not quite the way I thought, but well, I wasn't really thinking, right? And that's the point. So, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, the things that we share, share tools, not specifics. And when you share tools and you share tools of choosing, tools of awareness, tools of discernment, then you get to think it through. And there's logic and substantiation rather than just believing somebody. And that's the problem. He took what you suggested and he just believed you and he ran with it and it caused a problem, yes? Because it's a big problem, and now I see, I see it now. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that, and that's the thing is, this so it's such an eye opener, you know, yeah. as we're going with the beliefs, the conditioned yeah. behaviors and responses. Yeah. I exactly. and exactly. how it starts the belief system. So, so what I would recommend again, see, I try not to give advice, but I would recommend you and and hear me out and see if what I'm saying makes sense, right? That's the point. You got to make sense to you, not to me. Right. But I would uh, kind of think that in this situation, what might be useful and valuable might be, might be, not will be, might be, is a deep, sincere, earnest apology for your inadvertent nincompoopery. That's all it was, inadvertent nincompoopery, unawareness, right? Yes, but I, and I also, um, I also, it, there's two people that I definitely opened, you know, Correct. I owe Correct. a, a deep, Correct. sincere but, but, you know, it's, it's It's a sharing that is a sharing of coming to awareness. It's not an apology. It's not looking for forgiveness. It's not blame. It's not, uh, you know, commiseration. It's none of that crap. All you are doing is you are sharing your own coming to awareness as a compound term, right? Coming with yes. the dash of Right. Coming to put it in your addiction of power, coming to awareness. This was a massively powerful, you've had plenty of them, but this is another one, right? Another incredibly powerful coming to awareness that, oh my goodness, you know, I was trying to do good and I caused the problem. Why? Because my intents were off. I was kind of bragging a little bit about what an asshole I'd been in the past. Well, you're not. Yes. Yes, I, right. I was. Um, in, in other and, words, you weren't being impeccable when you said, "Hey, look, you know, don't you come and tell me all this crap? I've done it worse than you, and you know, you can't possibly be as bad as I was, and all this crap, right?" It's kind of a bragging in a way. Yes, it wasn't impeccable when you were being when you were saying that, right? So. Uh, no, it wasn't. And sorry about my video. It keeps it okay. keeps turning off, so I'm just going to okay. leave it. That's all right. That's okay. In other words, in other words, you're in that moment. You weren't being deliberately unimpeccable. But on retrospective things that you know that, well, you were kind of being a bit crappy. And when we crappy, it comes back and bites us every single time, right? Without fail. Yeah, you've got a beautiful cause and effect directly. And at the time, you kind of knew you were bragging a little bit, right? But it was kind of half knowing, right? It wasn't very clear and conscious, right? You kind of knew it. Like a red flag that's going up when you go on a date and you know, well, uh, right? Yeah, that kind of a knowing, right? But you didn't yes. act on it, and now you see you didn't act on it, and you kind of ran on it, and well, yeah, it's biting you very nicely now, right? So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> very good, very good, very good. So, so you know, this coming to awareness—that's what you're sharing. So, 
Yes, it's an apology, but it's a coming to awareness. That's really what it is, right? And you say, yes. okay, you know, it, it's a screw up. It was me being a fool, me being an accolade, me being an incapoop. And this is the consequence of it. And yes, I'm sorry for that. Uh, and, and, you know, this is what I've learned from it. This is what I've realized from it. You know, this is what I'm going to make every effort to change in me and so on and so forth, right? So you using this to change. It's not just to yes. say stuff because apologies are empty. They mean absolutely bugger all unless there's change, right? So yeah. you, you want to be forgiven, I'll forgive you when you change. If you've done something unforgiving, unforgivable, right? I, I won't forgive it because it's unforgivable. Change, and then you're a different person. Now, you're not the person who did that. The person who did that, I don't forgive. But the new person, no problem, right? So this is it. So you got to demonstrate. Otherwise, these things of, you know, understand, they all mean nothing if there's not real change, right? I can apologize all I like if I don't change, it means bugger all, right? And criminals and BMNs, they use this, right? They use it as a manipulation. So don't fall for that game, right? And don't fall for it with yourself either, right? So this coming to awareness, sharing, you it's an action that you're taking it's a doing you starting a new way of doing things right i mean already it's kind of hard for you to go back to this now right because you you had such a profound awareness here now it's like holy crap you know you, you really like got a nice big smack over here and it's like this really woke you up to say whoa you know i didn't mean uh. <laughs> it's like it's beautiful right there's a beauty to it no there's a magic to it so don't get stressed by it either. Well, you're not, but you know, just saying for in general, to see the gift of this. And if we don't learn to be at peace with coming face to face with these awful truths about ourselves and learn to see them for the magic that they are and face them and deal with them and own them and change because of them. And through the change, it now becomes an awesome truth, correct? Yes, very much so. That's it. It's now awesome. Why? Because you're not going to do it again. That's what's awesome about it. You cannot do it again because you No, not that I'm aware. And it, yeah, yeah. You understand how by trying to help in your terrible way, right? Real inappropriate application of goodness. You were truly trying to be good, but just in a very, very crappy, terrible, horrible way. Right? Yes. Like, oh, okay, okay, I get it. I was a fool. I was an idiot. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. I get it. I'm, 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 I'm a bit more clued up now. But uh, I just want to say, just know that in the future, you're going to go again. Oh, I was such an idiot. Okay. Right? It's you know, part that is a prime of example of, you know, of, for, of everything, of conditioning, as well as what not to do. Um, <laughs> and, you know, um, I think I have a project coming on with this. Yeah. So definitely uh yeah and this actually is gonna you know help me in the end too especially while i work on it because it also will bring more to light than you know just this but um it's very it's very profound for me and now that i understand yes. what i was doing and how i was doing it you know i thought i understood before but no now i i understand more you know, like exactly, exactly. And we're going to have many of these moments. I mean, they're really profound, you know, because uh, again, as I repeat so often, it's habit that is our big enemy. That's the thing we're fighting here, right? That's mm -hmm. the thing we're dealing with. And uh, this is the challenge. I even try not to use the word fighting because I don't really want to get into that fighting mode. But this is our challenge to deal with habit, right? And we, uh, habit forces us to pay attention all the time. So habit is also a gift because it, it, it forces us to be deliberate all the time. And when we deliberate, then we live with power, right? magic, awesome, fantastic. Our lives are enhanced when we live deliberately. So it all works together. There's that bigger picture, right? So now you, you think, oh, my goodness, our awful came and really bit me but it's a gift it's a capital g gift yes right yes Jessica, very much gift, so yes? yes very magical potent marvelous wonderful gift and this is very important to understand right so we always learning we're always nincompoops but we also get to be uh, you know less than nincompoops to some degree but in in the grand scheme of things we're always nincompoops right but to be an Inca poop is not necessarily a negative thing, right? <clears throat> because uh, you need an Inca poop side in order to, to have fun and play and all this stuff, right? So 
there's, there's lots of value to to being an income pooper. You just got to make peace with an income pooper. And it, it, it just changes mm -hmm. its level and grade, right, all the time. <laughs> it's a different kinds of Nikon poops. <laughs> it's very cool. It's very cool. All right, so uh, let's continue with conditioned behavior and response. So, uh, sorry, before I want to just re-emphasize what I was saying, to, to tie up the thing to remember, my takeaway, in other words, from your conversation is not the change of words, but the change of mindset, change of attitude, and change of intent. Change the yes. intent. The intent was to be helpful, to give advice, get rid of that and realize, man, giving advice, this is not a good idea, right? So if, if you want some advice, people, don't go around giving advice. <laughs> right. But I really mean that. And that's actually good advice, right? Oh, don't yes, it is. And I, I definitely <laughs> understand that. And I see that. I love because... those conundrums. Right. I so, do too. Right. So, so the intent is to share that's the intent yes and specifically what do you want to share not a bunch of limited choices which is just a clever way to manipulate somebody no you want to share the tools of choice yes that's what you want to share the tools of choice and choice is a synonym for awareness so that's what you're sharing right you sharing about choice how to come to your own awareness and don't believe me, please do not believe me. I wish I had one of those flashing things like beware, caution, you know, do not believe, right? And then I stripe through this, right? Do not believe this person. No, do not believe me. Absolutely not, right? Don't believe me, right? Use the tools that I share to figure it out for yourself, right? So this is it, you know, uh, the tools we've mentioned them before, thinking things through to the end, the profound tool. Perspective shifting to multiple perspectives, not just one to the other, black to white. That doesn't help you bugger all because you miss all the colors, right? So you want to learn to see all the colors. Perspective shifting to multiple perspectives. These are, and there are more tools like that. I'm just mentioning two of them now, right? Uh, these are the tools that go into your, your dictionary of power. So when we share these tools, that's a very different thing, right? You know, somebody's busy pounding the nail in with their fist. Well, wow, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. And I come along and I say, yeah, you go, dude. And I hold up a hammer. What the fuck is this? Oh, oh, okay, I get it. I don't have to say a word, right? I just have to draw their attention to a hammer. Or I can do it better. I can say, look at this bench over there. And they see a hammer and a saw and a, 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 a and a, a, I can't even think of another tool now. Anyway, uh, they see other tools, right? And well, which one's going to do the job for you? Well, saw and uh, well, a hammer's like duh, right? That's the point. When we share awarenesses that are like, a, they, they just duh. I don't have to say, yes, a hammer, this is what you do with a hammer. Uh, come on, you know, I, I don't need to be. Uh, person's planning things, right? Uh, it's unnecessary. So, so you can just just direct the awareness. That's all that's necessary sometimes, and it all falls together of its own accord, right? So this is a very powerful thing. And it's like, oh wow, I never looked there, right? That's it. That's so often, like how often ever you said to me, right, Jessica? You said, oh, I never thought of that. Exactly. Exactly. Or I, I never looked at the bench, which is the same thing as I never thought of it. I never took a look at the, at the workbench to look at the tools. Uh, you know, so when we have this, the things become those of their own accord. And to tie this all together, right? See, there's this kind of loopy circle thing going on here, right? Yeah, I got to tie it all together, right? That's what I love, tying things together. So to tie it all together, it is a very much the point here is that conditioned behavior and response is precisely that behavior that puts a bubble, a shield, a wall between you and that workbench, that toolbox. And it's what prevents you from, oh, I didn't think about it. Why not? Because I was conditioned to not think about it. Why? Because I was conditioned to think something specific. So by automatically, just by default, just by the way it works, if I'm thinking this and this is what I'm supposed to do and should do, then I don't even think that there are other options that I 
could look at, need to look at, right? So it forces me in a way without forcing me, it just happens to be that I end up not thinking. Why? Because I have a conditioned behavior and response. So I end up being stupid and mindless because of conditioned behavior and response, right? So conditioned behavior and response is ridiculously powerful. Watch all your behavior if you want. Again, some advice, right? Or suggestion. It's not advice, it's a suggestion. Watch all your behavior. See whether it is a choice or not. Now, I can happily say this. Why? Because I'm in attunement with the universe. The universe, the world, everything around you is whatever happens, it happens for the intent of enhancing and developing your awareness. So that's what I'm doing. I'm giving you a tool for the enhancement of developing your awareness. I'm in tune with the universe. So, okay, in this case, I can share it, right? I'm, I'm in alignment with the big, the whole big system, the grand plan, right? So this is very cool, very cool. So very simple business here. Pay attention, people, when you're worrying, are you doing it because you don't know any better, right? Because you've been told you should. In other words, it's a conditioned behavior and response. Are you a slave, therefore, to other people's ideas of how you should live? Do you want to be a slave, Mr. Worry Pot? Ms. Mm, Ms. Worry yeah. Pot? No. You don't want to no. be a slave. Exactly. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, then change, 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 change. You don't need to do it. You might believe you need to, but you don't need to. Yes? All right. So con uh, to continue on conditioned behavior and response. Our default is caring. It's also a deeply reinforced behavior via societal pressures. We can come to believe caring is best shown through anxiety and worry. Yes, Grandma. Did you hear that, Grandma? Daddy, I'll stop fussing about me. Yeah, yeah, you can show your caring in a better way, right? So don't be a grandma. I don't care how old you are, you can be a grandma, right? <laughs> we can come to believe caring is best shown through anxiety and worrying. But of course, it is not. It's not even the only way we can show caring. It's a way, one of many. Right? In my anxiety and worry, I notice comes out in anger. There you go. There you go. Also, uh, also a, a terrible way of showing your caring. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I will get, and this is something I wrote about too. I will get mad at somebody for, okay, no, well, let's, I'm going to rephrase that. I used to get mad. Thank you very much. I was about to object, Your Honor. So, I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> that's not an evidence. Uh, you know, you, you don't know if you're going to do that in the future. Don't be saying like this is something that's going to be a complete. Con uh, no, no, no. Thank you. You used to. That's accurate. Correct. That's yes. the only thing that you know is a fact. Yes. Yes. I yeah. I used to get mad at people, even C, even S. Like I used to get mad at them for not doing things the way. I had suggested or advised. Oh my goodness, the arrogance. Because, oh my goodness. You know, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> but as I was going through and writing this article on it, I was like, oh my goodness. I, no. I no. was trying to force a, something like a belief or uh, even an experience you know, for them to see and say, oh, hey, yeah, um, maybe I need to change that. Like, I would purposely try to point something out to them. But I would get mad if they did not, you know, I used to get mad over, you know, things that they did not do that I suggested or advised, more so advised them to do. Um, and it would like, be like, why aren't you doing that this way? Um but I also never understood at that point. Like then I did not understand at all whatsoever that they are their own entity and they don't have to be like me. Yes, exactly. 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 And, and, and no matter how much you can see what they need to do or should do, the end of the day, they need to come to see that, not you right so your job is not to tell them what you see but to provide them tools so that they can see yes 
Yes, and I now get it. Like at first, I, before I, at first I was not getting it and I wasn't understanding, but now, yes, and I definitely understand and get it and where. And that, that's you know, my job, on. right? That's my job. I, I make the obvious obvious. Um, that's all. You might, you might, you know, object and say, well, but you know, why on earth do you want to make the obvious? Oh, isn't it obvious? I say, no, it wasn't obvious until it became obvious. One microsecond before it became obvious, it was not obvious, right? So in that moment, and of course, too, we, we take profound things and you share something that's profound and it becomes obvious. Man, isn't that the way we want it to be? No, we want the profound, the obvious, we want it to be all complicated. So if you getting to understand something, obviously, then it's like, well, duh, I get it. Uh, duh, duh, duh. That's what we want. That's what I aim for. So really, I really try to get to that duh point. Like you, when we were talking earlier, at some point it hit you, right? The obvious became obvious. You know, like, oh my goodness. Yeah, I did this. Okay, all right. I see how yes. it works. Okay, duh, duh, duh. It's a duh now. Right? It's not something you need to believe obvious doesn't require belief <laughs> obvious is obvious right so i try to avoid belief belief is very very tricky very complicating very problematic right so uh when we understand this it greatly helps things it's a very big deal all right so to finish the slide here right so uh let's read it again i want to read the whole slide because it leads to a point here our default is caring it's also a deeply reinforced behavior via societal pressures we can come to believe caring is best shown through anxiety and worrying, but of course it is not. It's not even the only way we can show caring. It's a way, one of many, not the best way by far, but we can believe thus, which reinforces the feeling, putting us into a caring anxiety loop. So yes, I'm talking about you. Yes, you, you're right there listening to this. That's not you, Jessica. I'm talking about uh, somebody else. They, yeah, uh, I'm like, well, yeah. yeah. Everybody out, yeah. And that's the thing is, it does do that to people. It does put you, in, you know, you into yeah. a caring, you know, anxiety loop because you're constantly yeah. ang feeling yeah. anxiety because you care so much about somebody. You want to help them. You want to be there for them. Yeah. You want to, you know, do anything yeah. and everything you can to yeah. ease their, you know, yeah. whatever they're going through. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and I got good news for you. Yes, you, you, Mrs. Worrypot sitting there going, oh, I'm such a numbwit. I'm such a doofus. I'm so stupid. You know, oh, blah, blah, blah. Right. All the stuff. Right. I got good news for you. Right. Very good news for you. All right. So let me ask you, Jessica, what was the very first major thing that I shared with you that really transformed you, changed your life? Well, I said to you, where you all your problems come from? Myself. My beliefs, my uh, conditioned oh, goodness. behaviors. You remember? Yeah, and well, all those, yeah, those come from my goodness. Yeah. I, I am a good person. Wow, wow. But exactly. I said to you, you having problems in your life, not because you're a bad person, but because you're a good person. And you I just don't know how to be good. Yes. Inappropriate application of goodness exactly. is my problem. Right. So that was where we started to say, man, you know what? Yes, I've got all sorts of, I'm doing all sorts of stupid things, but I'm doing it because I'm trying to be good. I'm just trying to be good in a not ideal way, right? So this is the key thing to understand. And when we understand this, you know, don't feel bad about yourself because you're in a caring and loop. Stand that you are doing something that may not have the most positive of effects and consequences, uh, like like Jessica in her conversation earlier, and you know in where her sharing and you know, education where she was you know teaching somebody to you know, be a greater knucklehead than she was. She wasn't trying to be bad. It was inappropriate application of goodness. Right, Jessica? Yes, and I also got a word that I said earlier in. It, what I said was that is my issue. It was my issue. Exactly. I caught myself as soon as I, after just after I said it, I'm like, oh, oh. So it's very important to pay attention to what you say about yourself. Why? Because you are a good person. And because you are a good person, um, we're having a. To be honest.
Not well, I said try, right? So when this comes out, of, what happened? Did my audio break? It's It's been breaking up a little bit just recently. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. In that case, remedial measures are needed. I think when you heard remedial measures in the past, that was not to be, yes? Yes. <laughs> right, Jessica? Yes. <laughs> but in this case, we are going to apply remedial measures to the phone. Yeah, there's no sound at all now. No sound. Now really? sound. Now we have all sound. Right. It's a little bit delayed. It's a little bit delayed. All right. So um, I was saying that when we understand this, that we can be good and do things that aren't good. Oh, I was talking about when it comes to the words that you have to really, really, or we have to just in general, it's a good idea. Let me put it this way, right? I don't want to say you have to. That sounds like a, like, no, I'm done. Right. But it's very helpful or to understand the works, right? So if I say things, why are those things so powerful? Because I'm a good person. Well, how does that work? Well, let me tie it together. I'm a good person because I'm a good person. I don't like to be a phony. Yes. You don't want to be a phony. You're a good person. I don't want to be false. I don't want to be official. I don't want to be a liar. I want to be dishonest. That's all part of my goodness. Yes. So if I say something, my deep inherent goodness is going to try and make what I say true. Because if uh, if I don't make it true, then I'm making it into a lie. So if I say, oh, I'm such a worry pot. What does your inner bureaucrats, as I call them, your inner system, right? They say, oh, wow, All right, we're going to make it to a worry pot. Otherwise, it's going to be a liar. See? So pay attention to what you say. It is ridiculously, ridiculously powerful. Why? Because you're a good person and you want to be honest. You want to make it true. So this is why people get all excited about affirmations. The problem is they go overboard. Yes. So they will say, well, I'm not a worry pot. Well, that's just a lie too. You're too late now. You've already you know, been practicing to be a worry pot for the last 20 years. So too late now. If you suddenly say, oh, I'm not a worry pot, you're also lying. Yes. Now, say it long and hard enough and often enough, eventually you will make it true. It's a quicker and more powerful way that we can work with the system. And we actually get into it later on in the, in the program, right? So yes. I'm just going to throw it out there for now yes. that, yes, we're going to get into this utilizing your words in a very powerful way, right? when we start getting into the specific details. Right now, we're still looking at what exactly anxiety and worry is. And one of the things that it is, it's a conditioned behavior and response. Right? Very, yes. very, very powerful to understand. It becomes a habit and, and in, it's not so great exactly. way. Exactly. We can break it. Can break it. All right. So uh, let's look at the tasks and exercises here. Will you read them, please? How often do the things you worry about and are anxious about actually happen the way you worried they might what are the actual statistics involved okay so How give me an of something you worried about uh, recently something trivial um <laughs> i love this the worries are so important to people when they worry about them but you ask them what did you worry about oh man look at that look on that face right look at that perfect look of like <laughs> i have no clues like seriously really did i actually worry <laughs> yeah. well yeah now now you got me thinking of like i felt like i've been pretty <laughs> oh nope i now know um no, it's good that you couldn't remember worry. I, I was just having some fun there. Because oh. when you ask people that question, they, they can remember what they worried about, but they actually sit there looking for a legitimate worry in the context, right? So you weren't doing that. You were actually looking for a worry because you haven't been worrying, so you had a hard time. So I was having some fun, though, because, like I said, you know, typically when you ask people who are worry pots and who are still in the worrying, they were, oh, 
but actually they know exactly what they were worried about, but they're looking for a legitimate worry, which they cannot find, of course, right? I didn't ask for a legitimate worry, ask for whatever, any nonsense worry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so the legitimate worry is there, but yeah, I, I don't really, I've been pretty mellow. You have, you have. You've been <laughs> awesomely unworry-free because you've realized that this is not really worth your effort and time. So anyway, give me an example of something that you're worried about, legitimate or not. Okay, so legitimate. Um, no, or not, it doesn't matter. Well, I can't think of anything. That's... <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I worried about C's and S's safety. Okay, so what are the statistics involved? And now you... I can see those eyes going, what the hell does he mean statistics? I never looked up any statistics. I have no bloody clue. No, right? like, what, well, what are, like, how, I guess, statistics what are the when I think about. Statistics involved. Oh, the actual, it, it, like. Yeah, yeah, the actual statistics involved. I, right, you have no clue. I, I'm Do assuming. I have to Google that? Well, I would suggest you do, absolutely. Sure. Okay. If you're going to worry about it, know what the actual statistics are. Is this a one in a hundred chance? Is this, you know, nine out of 10 people going to have this? How, how valid is my worry? You said it was a legitimate worry. Well, if it's nine out of 10, then I bet it will, bet it will do something, right? I can't just sit there worrying, right? If it's mm. like highly likely to happen. If it's a one in a thousand thing, oh, all right, well, you know, I'll take my chances. It yeah? was like... It was like four out of 10. It wasn't, you know, something that you like shattered or my world. Know this for sure? Well, for me, not worldly <laughs> statistics, but for I'm me. Like, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pressing your button a little bit here, having fun with this. To say, <laughs> yes, you see, yes, somebody who, 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 who with great certainty and solemnity and, and, and sincere earnestness told us this was a legitimate worry, but knowing the actual statistics involved well not really right so okay i'm having a bit of okay, that makes that i'm exposing the preposterousness of worry we worry we believe it's legitimate and do we know the actual statistics no now now if i do know the actual statistics right let's say okay you you get some disease and I look it up and say, well, you know, sorry, you know, uh, you know, Joe, Mary, whatever. I say, you know, um, I'm, I've got good news and I've got bad news. What do you want first? Good news. You want the good news? No. Oh. Well, uh, hmm. no, oh. sorry. Try again. Bad news. Well, the bad news is that the good news is not for you. <laughs> that's, that's my bedside manner joke, right? That's when you've got really bad news to get to somebody and say, what do you want, the good news or the bad news? And you hope they choose the bad news. You say, well, you know, the bad news is the good news is not for you. That's when it's like really, really bad news, right? Okay. So my point is that I'm trying to get at it now. I'm having fun here is that if there's really, really bad news, you say, well, you know, you got this disease and well, nobody recovers from it. Okay. So there you go. Right. You just so, like my reaction. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the point I'm trying to make is if it's truly terrible news, you accept it. There's nothing you can do with it. And that's the end of the world. Okay. You know, you don't go around and well, you can, I suppose, but well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to make the best of the few minutes that I have left. Right. Or days or weeks or whatever. Right? That's typically what happens. So uh, my point is that if you're going to spend the time you're worrying about it, there's nothing you can do. So in likewise, when you when you think, okay, well, it's a 90% chance, there's still nothing you can do with it. Right? Uh, your worrying doesn't make a difference. So make the best of it is the point I'm trying to make. Right. So when you know the statistics, it helps you when it comes to worrying. Usually worrying is because we don't know the actual statistics, right? When we do know, we know what's to be done or not to be done, right? There's nothing we can do, there's little we, we can do. We can, we can do everything we can to bring those chances down. But other than that, well, I just have to accept it. This is the way life is, right? You do what you can and then you accept, right? You accept what's going to happen. So when you know the actual statistics, it's very useful for reducing your worry.
Yes. So uh, when I ask that question there, because I'm sort of kind of teasing a little bit for the worry pots to say, you're so convinced that you should be worrying and that your worry is legitimate and genuine, but you don't know what the actual statistics are, right? So how often do you even check up whether or not things turn out the way you worried they would? That's another thing, right? Did you actually follow up? Oh, I was so worried that, you know, uh, they were going to run away and, and, and uh, I don't know, whatever, you know, people worry about stuff, like they worry about people running away and, you know, getting married or something before it's, yeah. I know. It doesn't make any sense when I even say it as an example, but did you actually check to see if they actually did do this, you know, so. Uh, um, generally, as will let me know what happens as is happening. Um, yeah, yeah. and you know, when C runs away, it just, you know, ran away just because he, you know, had that sudden urge to do it. Um, it, I was, I was worried about it for the simple fact that, um, you know, being, you know, a young person, yeah. there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of bad people out there and being as vulnerable as he was, there's a lot of bad people, you know, he, it's really not good. Great. So I think that was my biggest legitimate worry is that like something were to happen to him because he wow. doesn't have his phone. He doesn't have anything to protect himself with things like that. Now, can we change worry to concern? Yes, we can, because that's more of me being concerned than worry. Very different. Concern is definitely something very different. Yeah, and it's much more wholesome. It's much more valuable. It's much more sensible. I can be concerned and not worry. And man, that's a much, 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 much greater improvement on things. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so, well, when we worry about somebody doing something, in this case, he actually did the thing, so it's not a good example yet. But, you know, when I worry about Mary getting pregnant, for instance, you know, just for argument's sake here now, right? And Mary's, I don't know what, 13 or 14 or something. Uh, and did I actually check to see that, oh, she went on the date to this boy and they went to the movies. Did I actually check to see if she got pregnant as a result? No. Exactly. But, but this is what some people worry about, right? Oh, she's going on a date, you know, she's going to get pregnant. I, I mean, I, I, it sounds foolish when I say it, but I, I've known plenty of people who think this way, right? Uh, seriously. I mean, they worry and very about stuff. rarely do we ever check back. Do we, right. you exactly. know? We follow up. We don't follow up. You know, exactly. Exactly. So we don't only not know the statistics, but we don't follow up. If you were to do so, you're going to build a database and you're going to see, whoa, you know what? Uh, you know, Mary goes to the movies on a date and, and so does Jane and, 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 and Clarice and, and Magdalena and all of them. And well, you know, yeah, okay. Uh, they might get pregnant, but not from going to the movies, right? So <laughs> from other stuff. So uh, my point is when you actually start paying attention, you start to realize that you are sort of worrying about stuff that's not very real, yes? Right, very important. So yes. follow up. Now, the, the next question here, these are very powerful questions. How often do you deliberately worry? Will you choose to worry? And what's implied with this question? Very cool question. Very cool question. Okay. While well, you, okay. So when we when we wait, worry, one second, one second. I just want to say okay. while you answer that, uh, well, I can take the phone with you. Never mind. I have to take care of something, but I can take the phone with you. All right. Very cool. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So when. I, okay, so my my answer is going to be a little bit different now. Um, yes, and that's yes. because when we worry, we are choosing to worry. It's in undeliberate way. Yeah, yeah. However, so this is kind of a trick question because we don't we don't necessarily deliberately worry. We choose to worry, which is an undeliberate form of you know doing things um what's implied with this question is that we don't truly deliberately do it exactly it's that understanding that you're not truly deliberately doing it but being aware that you're that you're exactly. unaware of doing it so therefore you're being undeliberate exactly exactly and if i said to you uh jessica 
All right. Please, uh, right now, uh, would you uh, worry some for us, please? No. Would you would you engage in the activity of worrying and being anxious right now? Right. The, do it. Sorry, deliberately. no. Sorry, no. Nope. <laughs> exactly. 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 You see, nobody in their right minds would choose to do this. We think we should. We need to. We have to. But not so. Right? The other choices. Yes. Right? Because we are conditioned to believe that a good person worries, and if you don't worry, then you're just being selfish. Exactly. Well, and of course, none of this is really true. So this is very powerful. But when we realize that you don't sort of set aside a, a part of your calendar and say, well, okay, th this is my worry time. You know, like this is my yoga time. This is my worry time. It's like absurd. the French? I, you know, but uh, I, I say that, but I do know some people who do do that, by the way. <laughs> well, I have known people who, who say, oh, well, that's my time where I worry about stuff, right? They've actually made time for it. It's quite profound. It's quite preposterous, but okay, nonetheless. All right, I understand that, you know, for some of them, they weren't really worrying. It's just a label. And what they were doing was thinking about stuff, figuring stuff out, you know, sorting through their problems and stuff like this. Okay, fine. Uh, they called it worrying, but really it was, you know, thinking things through, problem solving, figuring stuff out. So it was actually a positive thing. But if you were to, you know, set aside time to engage in the negative feeling of worry and anxiety, the unpleasantness of it, this would just be crazy, right? Well, yes, because I literally wouldn't get off this couch or out of bed if I did that, because, you know, exactly. my worry, it used to, when I worried and felt anxious, it really went from zero to, to 100 in no time flat because there was the anxious, the anxiety after that, then there's panic mode. And when I get into panic mode, I'm frozen. I, I can't do anything, can't think, nothing. Exactly, exactly. So we have the lament of the ages and we might get all poetic and say, but why, why do they do it? Why do they do it? What? <laughs> well, oh, we can go on for that. The answer is exactly because we think we should, right? Conditioned behavior and response. We worry because we think we should, not because we want to. And you're a good person. So as a good person, right? You say, yeah, but you know what? There's a lot of things that I don't want to do, but I do them anyway. Because, well, I have to do them. I'm supposed to do them. I should do them. They're a good thing to do. With worry and anxiety, it's not the same as going to work and you know doing a job and bringing up all your other responsibilities. This is the problem, right? We believe anxiety and worry is a responsibility, but it's not, right? To be exactly. concerned, to be cautious, to be sensible, to be thoughtful, to be strategic, right? To pre-plan to be preemptive yes those are anxiety and worry are crappy ways of being prepared being thorough being scrupulous being diligent right being preemptive they crappy ways so they lazy ways of doing that sorry to say but that's what it is right so yeah who you be asking not me not me right so mm -hmm. be, be very understand that yes, you do it because you feel you should and it's your responsibility and all this. But man, it's a very crappy way of fulfilling your responsibilities. And it is a very sneaky way of avoiding actually really doing stuff that you don't want to do. All right. So yeah, so there's a lot of BS involved with anxiety and worry also, right? Okay, sometimes you anxiety and worry because things aren't ideal and you know they aren't ideal and you don't know what to do because you don't know what patience is, don't know what discipline is, don't know what forbearance is, right? So we sit there and we're anxious. Understanding. Right? So we lack understanding precisely. We don't have alternative options. All right, I hear you. And you sort of get a pass until next time. And then you'll get another smack on the head from the universe. <laughs> we don't, th oh, I've been dealing with a lot of those. But um, <laughs> lately I, I've been dealing with a lot. Um, but also, you know, when we when we worry and feel anxious about something, we are unaware 
of other options. We think we don't have any other exactly. options. Exactly. We believe we don't have any other options, exactly. but in reality, there yeah. are other choices. Yeah, yeah. Ask Sher about this, right? Sher will tell you very profoundly, she lived most of her life not believing that she had options. Now she will tell you there's always another option. Always. Right? Oh, yeah. Even, I used to think she was even, off her rocker. Right. Especially even options that you cannot imagine. So understand there's an option. You just don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. right? Don't confuse not being aware of an option or being able to imagine an option, meaning there isn't one. That's just arrogance. There are plenty of options that you have no ability even to imagine, right? And then they happen. And it's like, holy moly, I never would have guessed that could happen. Well, it did. So see, you never knew. That was an option that you couldn't imagine. Happens all the time, right? And in our yep. recent, right, with you and with Sir, in your recent experience, something happened, which was like, holy moly, this never happened before. I didn't think it was possible, but yet it happened, see? Magic, magic, potency, yes. power. Right. So intent is very powerful and it can make things happen that we don't believe can happen, right? This is the magic of it. So uh, it's very powerful to realize there are always options. Always, always, always. Just because you don't know them doesn't mean they don't exist. All right, so we get to our next task and exercise here. Does your worry and anxiety need to be a habit, Jessica? Absolutely not. <laughs> it might be one, but it doesn't need to be one, correct? Very much so. Right, so we've been very precise here, very precise, very important to be precise. So now that you said, well, it doesn't need to be a habit, so why is it a habit? Because that's how we're conditioned. Exactly. And well, because habit is very sneaky and habit is just around and habit is something that makes me do stuff that I don't really want to do. And habit is a is something that makes me unaware. So habit is a form of unawareness. Precisely. Habit is a, 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 a perpetuated unawareness. Exactly. And, and, and you could say almost in, in some cases, it can be a deliberate unawareness that we've implemented, like if we've deliberately implemented a habit. Yeah. So yeah, habit is just a, a continuing, ongoing, uh, you can call it a looping unawareness. Yes? Yes, very much so. Very powerful to understand a habit as, as oh my goodness, <gasps> I'm like horrified. Oh my God, all these habits. Well, that means I'm being unaware all the time. Oh no, panic. Okay, oh, I better worry about this. <laughs> right? <laughs> you want something to worry about? Worry about habits. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Pay attention to how your worrying and anxiety is subtly reinforced and entrenched by others and society. Or, or we'll switch this up a little bit for Jessica. We'll say, Jessica, pay attention to how you subtly reinforce the worry and anxiety and entrench it in others, right? Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a whole different ball game now you say how yes. I. Yes, it's a um, very big deal, right? So how do I subtly reinforce and entrench somebody else's anxiety in a way. How do I subtly support them and commiserate and justify and, and all the things that keep their um, anxiety and worry as a habit that keep it entrenched in other words, right? Yeah. Yes, so I actually can, um, I did not actually, I can come up with a situation um, as of almost recent, um, I, I sadly, you know, without even realizing it, I, um, I will join in with SS worry anxiety when it comes to, or, you know, concerns, things like that, but yeah. it yeah. comes yeah. out sometimes yeah. in worry and anxiety, um, yeah. yes. with, when it comes to C, I also had a friend who was having some issues and like, I, by saying, you know, uh, siding with them essentially yes. and saying like 
you know, TF, like, how is that even okay? And, you know, things like that. Um, yeah. That's how I, sadly, because I'm trying to be a good person, I'm trying to be a good friend, I'm trying to be a good daughter, and, you know, trying to be a good mom. But I, I unknowingly thank Syl for bringing that out because I didn't think about that before. <laughs> But I can I, I can name so many times that I use the inappropriate application of goodness, and I over worry. I yeah. over you know, and then I enhance their worry and anxiety because exactly. I'm fueling exactly. it by agreeing with them. Exactly, exactly. Now, just to backtrack a little bit, remember we were talking about awful truths and the necessity, the absolute necessity to learn to be able to be able to face and deal with an awful truth. Why? Because look what just happened there. I, in this question, when I turned it around, I made uh, Jessica aware of an awful truth. But if she wasn't able to face and deal with it, she would have stopped right there. She would have refused to acknowledge that it even was a truth, it was a reality, and a whole system would have stopped. And it doesn't make the awful truth go away. She would have just gone into a funk and ignored it and, and uh, ign tried to avoid it. And, and now what? Now what? Now she has an awful truth in her life, but she's refusing to deal with it. This is a this is wonderful solution. Right? It's so foolish to avoid an awful truth. It doesn't make it go away. We think it does. It's like you know when you, when you have animals or children and they put their hand, oh, I, I can't see you, you can't see me. Right? That logic. Well, that's what people apply to awful truths. If I can't see the awful truth, well, it doesn't exist. Well, nonsense, it's still there, right? But because you were, you looked at, so, oh, thank you. I mean, yeah, you teased me a little bit, right? And say, wow, well, you know, thank you for bringing this to my awareness. But you really mean it, right? right? I mean, we're having fun. But you really mean this, that thank you for bringing it to my awareness. This is something that I can pay attention to now. Now, it's an awesome truth. Why? Because I can deal with it. I can take care of it. I can pay attention to it. And I can not add to making things worse for my loved one by helping to entrench their anxiety and worry, right? Man, what a gift now. What a gift. What a gift. What a gift. I don't want to be doing this, right? I don't want to no. be entrenching somebody's anxiety. This is a horrible thing. So, okay, you know, you when you said it at first, I'm like, oh crap, yeah, that you know, I kind of did that. Oh, but if I had too much ego and I saw it as an awful tooth and I couldn't handle it well, then I'd never learn and I'd keep doing this awful thing, right? So this ability to face and deal with the awful truth. This, when we can do this, it's a power, it's a gift, it's an awesome, and it becomes a joy because now I can say, man, yes, I was, you know, being an idiot, but now I can really change this, I can improve it. It becomes an awesome truth. And of course, you know, in a, in a, in a little while now, after Jessica has been doing this and has changed the habit and the practice, she's going to come back and say, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore, you know, to my loved one. I'm not, now it's like whenever they come up with this, I come up with other ways and suggestions, I ask questions, you know, I, 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 I share things that, and uh, that we, we have different ways now, right? We, we starting to think about things. We look at the statistics, we check up on the stuff and all the stuff. We do things rather than just default to looping into tired old anxiety and where it goes round and round and it's miserable and it's unpleasant and it gets us nowhere. But now we've changed. It's like all excited. So I'm looking forward to this excitement from Jessica. But you see my point here, awful truths becoming awesome truths. Yes, yeah. very, very, very powerful. So last question here before we go, what are other more useful and personally rewarding ways you can show and demonstrate your caring? I'll leave that question for next time, right? That's yes. a question that you can, you can spend a whole week uh, going through and, and come up with, with a, a zillion different ways, right? What are other more oh, useful and personally rewarding ways you can show and demonstrate your caring. I'm very keen to hear this. And anybody watching this now or on the recording, please share in, in comments what other personally rewarding and useful ways you use to demonstrate and show your caring, right? Other than anxiety and worry and stress, yes? How do you show your caring in personally rewarding ways that are useful? Yeah, very, very, very powerful question. 
ridiculously powerful question. And if you don't know, figure it out. Yeah. Now, if you say, well, I don't know. That's the only way I know how. Well, figure it out. Yes. Make an effort to figure it out. Look around you. Look at people who don't, uh, who care, but who don't show it and demonstrate it through anxiety and worry. How do they do it, right? If you don't know yourself, if you can't imagine it, fine, that happens. Sometimes we get a block. Look around, right? Or if you really, really think this through and you spend the whole week and you can't see any examples, well, come on Zoom or put in chat and ask and we'll go through some, right? Well, one that you know already from me here, uh, right? I mean, every time I was laughing yes. at Jessica, having great fun, I'm caring. I'm showing humor through, caring through humor, right? So, yes, and caring. also caring and sharing. Exactly. Just not with everything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave those words alone. We don't need to see them. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. <You're> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah it's very powerful it's very powerful but humor is a very powerful way to care very very powerful right and we can uh, be, be humor and have humor and have a positive attitude even when things are miserable and negative and don't believe me go to a hospital and watch and look at the different nurses sooner or later if you're lucky you're gonna have that joyful nurse come around right and this yes. nurse, no matter how much you, oh, you're going all, and you know, some of the patients, when they're in pain, they get truly negative and miserable, and they will call the nurses the worst possible names and swear and curse at them. It's unbelievable, right? What people do when they're really miserable. But to the positive nurse, she just, oh, hello, Jack, here you are again. I see you're still complaining today and whining and moaning and bitching and going on. Well, she might not say that, but if it was me, I would say that, right? And, and just, you know, she's all happy about it. It doesn't faze her in the least, right? She's a joyful, cheerful nurse, right? And not an artificial cheerfulness. She's truly joyful. She has an inner joy. Your crap and your negativity and your nonsense makes no difference. She shows her caring through her joy, right? She takes joy in taking care of the people right that's her joy her joy is taking care of them no matter how miserable they are right and no matter how negative and how rude and how gross they might be and they can be truly abusive makes no difference oh, yeah. takes joy in the caring. so there's many ways to show joy then so humor and positivity and joy all of these are profound mechanisms for showing your caring doesn't matter how bad it is right yeah very very, very powerful right uh robin williams Robin Williams. Yep. Right? That's One of my all-time favorite actors. Right. right. Uh, what killed him was caring too much. Right? Yep. So understand. You, can, you really watched him and paid attention. You saw that his humor was fueled by this deep, deep caring. He cared so much that it depressed the hell out of him. And eventually he killed himself because of it. Right? Yep. So understand that we need to appropriately care. Oh, my goodness. That makes so much more sense. So... Sorry, one last aha moment here. No problem. It's a big point. When, yes, when I, so basically when I start to care too much and I worry about people, but I try to make their lives better, their lives easier for them, try to take off some of that load. But by caring too much like that, I ended up making myself more depressed. Exactly, 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 exactly. So learn from Robin Williams. Because I feel I can say with 100% absolute certainty that Robin Williams would want you to learn from him. Do not follow his example. If there's any one person who would say that to you, it is him. Yes? So learn from it. Learn from it. Very profound yes. example. Very profound example. The world does not work the way we think it does. Yes? So Robin Williams, very, great much so. yeah, very profound point. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to end on a profound point if possible. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Thank you everybody for being here, for listening. Thanks those who watch this. I, I, again, you know, we do this just because really there's no real, you know, you don't have to watch. We don't do it to get people to watch. If you do, it's a bonus. If you don't, well, okay. It doesn't matter. But we do appreciate it when you do. And especially when you leave comments and feedback, this is always good because we learn, we learn, we learn. We like learning. 
Brilliant. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. I must show. I hope she was okay. You. I yep. must show. All right. Yes, very much so. All right. Brilliant. Thank All right. you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Too wonderful. Too wonderful. Uh, let me do this. Stop live stream. There we go. And then end Zoom.